Welcome to DIY Bypass Tools. My name is Robert Graydon and I'm one of the organizers here at the LBV and today we're going to be showing you how to make bypass tools at home. So a lot of you may be wondering, aside from being mid-pandemic and having to do all of this from home, what other reasons would there be for us to be making our tools DIY? The most obvious, of course, is that these are specialized tools and most of them aren't even in production, so if you want to get it at all, you need to be the one making it. Aside from that, when pen testing, it wouldn't be a fantastic look at a lot of sites to be the guy walking in with a duffel bag stuffed full of various tools and wire and rope and all of that. So it's handy to be able to know how to look around in your situation and find materials to make the tool that you need when on site. Today we'll be showing you how to make five different types of tools. The latch poker or puller, the under the door tool, the beside the door tool, padlock shims, and the latch knife. First off, we'll be teaching you how to make the latch poker or puller. The materials required for this is a single coat hanger or a piece of wire. You will also need a pair of pliers. Welcome to the Lock Bypass Village's uh, tools making presentation. So in this presentation, um, we're going to be going through a few different tools that you may have uh, seen already in uh, Bypass 101, which is another, uh, another talk that we'll be running multiple times uh, throughout the duration of DEF CON. And if you haven't already been to that, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, it's somewhat of a prerequisite to this presentation, just because we won't be uh, we won't be teaching you how to use these tools so much in this video, but just how to make them. Um, so to begin, uh, we're going with a pretty simple one. Um, some call it a latch poker, but its, it's essential purpose um, is when the latch of a door is visible to you from, uh, from the locked side. It's basically a tool to just go in and push that out of the way. Um, so. This one's incredibly simple. All we need is just a piece of wire, really. Um, it should be somewhat thick because it does need to be fairly rigid, um, but coat hanger wire works perfectly for this purpose. And we'll need a pair of pliers. So to begin with, we're going to take our pliers and we're going to bend the, uh, the tip and we're going to take about a centimeter and a half at the uh, the front of this and bend that over at 90 degrees and so then we have our sort of hook there and then we're going to go about four inches back from that and cut off the rest of our wire and at that point um, what I like to do is put a little bit of an eyelet onto uh, onto your poker here and so once we have that there and we have a bit of a, uh, a hole at the end of it you can just thread this onto a, a key ring and that works as the handle and how this functions is it just reaches in and you can use it to push a latch out of the way and so that is how to make a latch poker Next we'll be making the under the door tool. The materials required are a coat hanger and a piece of string. You will also need a pair of pliers. So in this video we're going to be making the under the door tool. Um, it's very similar in purpose to the, uh, the beside the door tool which we'll be making later in this presentation um, with the, uh, the key difference being that although both of them are trying to pull down on the handle on the other side of, uh, of a door, um, the beside the door tool requires a certain amount of clearance. So if we have the door frame and we have the door, um, the gap between those two has to be great enough um, that the tool is actually able to, uh, to pass through and sort of slide up that gap, otherwise it won't work. And if that uh, isn't possible, if we only have enough of a gap just underneath the door, not beside it, for our tool to go in, um, then we'll be having to use the under the door tool. So that's why we have these two different versions that accomplish the same thing. So to begin with, um, the materials that we have is uh, we'll be needing a coat hanger, we'll need string, 
Um, and if it's possible, try to get uh, some sort of string that is somewhat abrasion resistant, just because we're going to be pulling it underneath that bottom edge of the door when we're using this tool. And so if it's something that's too thin or easy to cut, then it might just uh, get actually snapped when we're using it to pull. Um, and then for tools, all we need is just a pair of pliers. So to begin with, we're going to be taking our coat hanger and turning it into a long uh, piece of wire, essentially, to, uh, to build our tool out of. So how we open it up is with this twisted area on the neck here, we just take our pliers and we're just going to firmly grasp the top there and then we can just twist this by hand and that will unwrap that top portion. So now we're going to be straightening this out by hand just to get um, just to get a straight piece to begin with. And so this only takes just a few, few seconds here. And some might find it helpful to use pliers for this step just because it's kind of hard to, uh, to grip the thin wire and bend it sometimes. So once we have our straight piece of wire here, so this has all been straightened out, um, what we want to do first is we're going to create a kind of loop at the end for our, uh, for our rope to attach to or our string. So we're going to take our pliers and we're just twisting that over. And so now we have this little eyelet here. And next what we are going to be doing is we're going to create a bend in, uh, in it and we want to create a kind of hook here that uh, that'll go over the door handle so this is the shape that we're looking for on this side of it and at this point we can take our string here and we will just tie that on and so now what we want to do is now this varies depending on the, the height that the handle is on the door that you're actually facing. Um, so in some cases you may need to either find a longer piece of wire or uh, you can also, if you get two coat hangers, um, twist them together to get enough length. Um, in this case we're just going to be making a small scale one um, that would work on the demonstration doors that we've been using throughout. Um, so we're just going to go down and imagine uh, if our handle is here and say this is where the bottom of our door is, um, then we're going to make a bend there at 90 degrees and we can just kind of make a little bit of a bend and then we have our hook here as a bit of a handle and so at that point our under the door tool is, uh, is complete. We'll now be making the beside the door tool. The materials required is a coat hanger and we will need a pair of pliers. So we're going to be making the beside the door tool in this video. So all that we need in terms of materials is just a regular wire coat hanger. Um, some coat hangers that are made out of wire you'll find that they have a sort of plastic or rubbery outer sheathing on them. Um, and while those will work sometimes, they're, uh, they're not ideal because they're thicker so they get stuck and the plastic actually um, inhibits almost how strong they can be just because it, it means that the wire inside is going to be a lot thinner. Um, so you want to try to find one that's just wire itself, not with any coating. And so to begin with, we're going to just unravel the, uh, the twisted top here and that's going to let us open up the coat hanger. And the easiest way to do this is just with your pliers. You just grab at the top and then rotate the whole coat hanger. And so now we have our opened up coat hanger here. So just by hand, we are going to straighten out the wire here. And this just gives us a nice starting place in terms of actually creating our tool. And so we have a fairly straight wire here now. So the part that's actually going to be uh, reaching out to the handle on the other side of the door is what we're going to be creating first. So we're going to take our, uh, our wire and we're going to bend it with about 
an inch and a half or two inches like so. We're going to be adding another bend like that. And so that creates our hook that will actually be going onto the handle on the other side of the door. So now while keeping this flat, we're going to be coming down about a foot and a half and we're going to be bending a 90 degree angle in there. So it's looking like this. And then what we're going to be doing next is about the thickness of the door is how much you want your, uh, your piece of wire here to be. And so after that thickness, you want to put another 90 that brings the wire coming up like this. And so now we have this basic shape. And so this can go around the side of the door. And then we're going to come up to here and we're going to look where is our hook. So we have the hook that's on the handle here. So what we're going to do is mirror that on the other side just by bending this over. And the purpose of that is that just gives you an indicator. So when you are using this tool, you can look at where this is on your side of the door and you can, because they're bent symmetrically, you can see that the, uh, the hook is in that same place on the other side of the door. So you know where it is relative to the handle. Okay, so just to quickly demonstrate the uh, sort of symmetrical idea of this tool. So here we have a small example door. Um, and you can see that it's a lot shorter than a real one. So the tool that we've made here, it's kind of built for a full size one. So it isn't going to quite actually be usable on this tiny example here. Um, but the basic idea with this is that you would put it underneath the door and then sort of jimmy it up until you have this piece here between the actual door and the frame. And so at this point, just from looking on this side, um, we can see where our little bend is here. And we can see, okay, well, that's right next to the, uh, the handle here. And what that means is that because it was bent symmetrically, we know that that's actually where it is on the other side as well. And so that's, uh, that's how we make this tool and also how we use that symmetrical trick on it. Next, we will be making padlock shims. The materials required is a soda can, and you will also need a pair of scissors. So now I'll be showing you how to make padlock shims. Um, these are a very simple thing to do at home. You just need a soda can that's empty and you probably want to wash it out beforehand just so you don't make a mess as well as a pair of scissors and that's it. So to begin with what we want to do is basically get this flat wall of it out into a uh, rectangular sheet so that we can more easily work with it. So to do that we're just going to cut the bottom off of it. top off of it, and these edges are very sharp so be careful that you don't cut yourself, and then we'll cut right down the middle, and we can open it up and we get this flat sheet of very thin aluminum. So you can kind of flatten it a little bit, that just makes it easier to work with. Um, and so next what we want to do is actually cut out our shim. So the basic shape that it's going to be um, is it kind of has a curve downwards um, and that's the actual shim part and we're going to leave about a, uh, a centimeter strip on top of it so that we can fold that over to create a handle that we won't cut ourselves on. So we'll be starting this off by just cutting that curved piece down there. And that's the part that's actually going to go down into the padlock and push the, uh, the latch out of the way there. And then again, here we're cutting about a centimeter wide strip. And so that leaves us with this basic shape for our shim. And all that's left to do now is we take this strip that we made here and we want to fold that in half. And what that does is, first of all, it gives us a rounded edge so we aren't going to actually cut ourselves on that because the, uh, the edges of these pieces are extremely sharp. Um, and also it just adds a bit of structural rigidity to this so that it will hold up better while shimming. And so then the final step is we're just going to take this and kind of bend it a little bit into a... Uh, bit of a round shape just so that that'll more easily conform to the uh, 
the actual shackle of the padlock when we're trying to put it in. And so that's how you make a uh, padlock shim at home. Finally, we'll be making the latch knife. The materials required for this is pallet strapping. This is commonly seen in warehouses where it's used to secure large loads onto pallets and is something that's recycled after use so very easy to find. You will also need a pair of tin snips and a pair of pliers. Okay, so we're going to be making um, a latch knife in this video. So what we need for this in terms of materials is a piece of pallet strapping. So this is a very common thing to see in warehouses. It's essentially a very thin piece of steel and it's used to hold down materials on pallets. Um, but because of how common it is, it's also very helpful for us if we're trying to DIY this. In terms of tools, scissors aren't quite going to cut it for this material, so we will be needing a pair of tin snips and we'll be needing um, some pliers. So the actual creation of this tool is fairly simple. First of all, we're going to want to cut a kind of knife point onto this, and what that lets us do is push this in and actually get it behind that latch to begin pushing it out of the way. So now we're just going to cut that knife point onto our piece of material here. And so now we have that there. And if you wanted to, you would maybe straighten it out a little bit if it got bent while cutting. Um, and then so what's left to do is we're actually going to have to put a handle on this. So you want to look at your point here. And if we know that the, uh, the latch is going to be on this side, we want to go in behind it. We want our handle to be facing outwards from the door because how this tool works is it goes in between the door and the frame. So we're going to take our tool here and we're going to just start the bend by hand. And so you can see that we have the start of a handle formed here. And now is when we need those pliers because this is a fairly strong material. So the pliers are just going to let us take this and uh, squish it down so that it's thin enough to actually go in there. And the hammer also would help out with this if you do have that, but we can get it done with the pliers. And so that's how we make the, uh, the knife latch, or the latch knife. Thanks for coming out. You can ask us questions on Discord, or if you want, you can message them to us. If you haven't already, I'd highly recommend checking out Bypass 101, as well as some of the other talks that we'll be running. Enjoy the rest of DEF CON!